This annual churning hype cycle is a big part of gaming culture. It's tradition. And despite existing purely to shill video games and make more money, it used to be genuinely very, very entertaining and fun, and, and it brought the community together to both celebrate and criticize the industry, right? In fact, gamers kind of acted like these consumer watchdogs. Like we felt that if we were let down or exploited or taken advantage of in some way, we'd speak out and there will be consumer revolts fueled by this online egregore, right? This cultural hive mind of gamers. At least that's how it used to be a little bit more before all of the rampant censorship that happens now and the stifling of actual discussion. And 10, 15 years ago, when the corporations were little by little, they were taking over the money side of the gaming industry, right? They were buying up a lot of dev studios. Year by year, there was this change happening within the boardrooms of major game publishers and companies. There seemed to be less and less attention being paid to meeting the standards of the community. That suddenly went from quite a high priority for the industry with those classic studios like Bungie, and they're developing Halo for Microsoft, and yet they are totally on the same page as the community, they're in tune, they're in touch, and it's just, you know, the game comes out and this huge new subculture of Halo fans is born. And it's just nothing but love for Bungie. And somehow that got squandered over the ensuing decades. Somehow, quote unquote. You'd think that these companies would be more aware, like, wait a minute, it's a pre-existing community of gamers who love this shit. And in the case of Bungie, I mean, you saw how they had so much goodwill built up a surplus of positivity on the eve of the release of Destiny. So many people bought the hype and it was being sold as this kind of evolution of Halo. It's kind of like the dream project of the sci-fi shooter fan, you know? I mean, and the devs themselves are hyping it. It's Joseph Stanton's dream project. All of the lore looks really cool. It's like a D&D &D meets sci-fi FPS. On paper, from the devs of Halo, that should have been an absolute home run for Bungie, but despite having a lot of creativity in its early stages, it was ruined by the corporate influences in the boardroom who are making sure that the industry is steered in a certain way, where instead of a priority being placed on community cohesion and satisfaction producing good products, we need to just milk this community, right? The community are our marks. They're just dumb, grug brain gamers and it's okay to lie to them. It's absolutely okay to misrepresent the project to get those pre-orders. It's not unethical, it's fine. And I think the release of Destiny and the fall of Bungie as a respected developer, that is like a watershed moment in the gaming scene. It was like a fall of a titan. And now, I mean, 343 Industries, you know, a Microsoft created studio. I mean, it exists purely to develop Halo. You'd think it'd be pretty easy, right, guys? You've got the formula, you've got the template for Halo. Just get someone in there that understands why the series is good. Hire fucking Marty O'Donnell. Like, how could you produce a fucking Halo game without a Marty O'Donnell soundtrack? That boggles my mind. But I mean, Marty is not on good terms with 343 and they treat the Halo legacy with this weird pompous kind of disdain, like they're above it, like catering to the tastes of the Halo fan base is somehow like an admission of inferiority. Like for them, they need to put their spin on Halo. Halo is better than it's ever been. That's kind of this, <laughs> this fake consensus that they're trying to create, especially with Halo Infinite, because, you know, they think that by releasing a trailer where, oh, look, Master Chief is now in his old art style. He looks more similar to the design in Halo 1. That is somehow supposed to what? justify years of mediocrity and just completely misusing the Halo IP. Like, ooh, look at our really childish kind of unesthetic art style here for Halo Infinite. Feeling nostalgic yet, right? Like, we failed at producing decent new Halo games, now we're gonna monetize your nostalgia. Because Halo fans are chud babies that have expressed a lot of toxicity about Halo, so fuck them, we're gonna begrudgingly do what they want, but kind of not really, right? <laughs> like, wow. Now, I'm not going to celebrate this very insincere, bare minimum amount of goodwill. It's not even goodwill. Halo is not back. Halo is not on form again. 
And I hear these copers declaring Halo Infinite as some kind of win. It's like the first win for 343 because they finally gave the community what they were looking for. Well, an open world Halo, is Halo open world? Is that what Halo is? And uh, is Cortana wearing this like frumpy sci-fi uniform? What happened to hot Cortana? What happened to babe Cortana? That's a, I think that's a legit question. But again, it's the same answer, isn't it? It's, you don't get what you want though, dude, right? You know, you actual Halo fan that's like, yes, I like the design of Cortana and Halo 1 and 2 and 3 and even 4, right? 343 three even nailed the Cortana in Halo 4. And then they apologized for it. And they said, sorry, we'll never do that again. We will never subject you gamers to holographic booba ever again. Cortana is a female strong character and she doesn't exist just to titillate you fucking perv gamers, all right? But then I've been thinking about that particular justification of feminist sanctioned characters, right? Hot take. That's literally yes. No, Cortana does exist for my enjoyment. That's why I'm playing the game. If you want my money, you can start by giving me my holographic booba back and then we'll, we'll talk. You can get rid of the Mexican dude shouting at Chief and somehow being front and center in a fucking Halo game. You know, hey, I'm not anti-Mexican, but this is just annoying, right? Because I can imagine the guy that designed that character literally coming in his pants at the thought that gamers will go, hey, wait a minute, why is this Mexican guy like ordering Master Chief around like he's not the legend that we know he is? I mean, hmm, lore-wise, you don't talk to him like that. He's your superior officer for one thing. You know, show some fucking respect, right? And then the, the, the journalist goes, ah, look at these racist gamers. They won't accept fucking Sergeant Rodriguez or whatever his name is. He is a interesting BAME character with agency and he's not gonna take any shit from any white man, including Master Chief Spartan 117, savior of humanity. Like, hmm, yes, it's come to this. It's that, you know, characters are now not written and created for the express purpose of improving the plot, the immersion, the entertainment factor. No, it's more like a weird act of collusion between the journalist and the devs, who are all woke retards, going, yeah, let's just, I'm gonna stick this Mexican guy in here and we're, we know it's gonna kind of annoy gamers. You can write an article about it later and you can just shit on gamers and we all get paid, right? Somehow this awful anti-gamer gaslighting, I mean, this is also now normalized. Somehow now it's part of the yearly hype cycle. It's baked in now. Straight white male gamers are scum. And wait a minute, wasn't that, wasn't that last week's headline? Yeah, I'll just, just run it. Perpetual headline, kill yourselves, white, straight gamers. Aloy is strong and beautiful and not fugly. And the fuzziness is obviously, that's just realism. That's just women, okay? You don't like fuzzy, fugly Aloy. You hate women. Ob How many times do we have to go through this, right? This toxic exchange that we have now, and this like ge the generating controversy so that they can have clicks, and then the developers are actually complicit here. You have to just call it what it is. It's anti-gamer, right? The anti-gamerists are in charge of the industry, and yet for absurd reasons, we're still expected to participate in this ritualistic following and fetishization of the industry but it's not the same industry, right? This parasite kind of crawled into the skin of the video game industry and is now going, yeah, worship me. No, I mean, like in 2022, we've gone off the, in the deep end. I mean, I, I think the gamers participating in the hype cycle still to this day have kind of lost their mind a little bit, right? It's, it's, it's like you've spent too long in, in this cycle of pain and now, you know, you're losing it, right? And I'm one of these people, you know, like, being let down by uh, a tentpole release that has been hyped with millions of dollars worth of marketing and it's being shoved in our faces. We're being asked to trust the developers with a pre-order, you know, because that's how much we need to be excited and all this stuff, you know. Ultimately, I am not this, this cynical hermit living in the middle of the wilderness that is incapable of being excited about anything. I'm close to there, right? I'm very close, but I'm still capable of excitement for the right developer, for the right creator, and under very specific conditions. I, I'm simply not gonna let the modern 
industry with all of the gaslighting and the negativity. I'm not letting them take that away from me because I see a lot of gamers these days who it's like it's a it's so it's so twisted. The only way that they can continue to engage with the industry and this yearly cycle, right? The only way they can stomach it is through pure just jaded cynicism and detachment. And you know, it is that it's that 4chan V meme of um Shazam as in the superhero Shazam, right? Uh, from that dumb movie on V, Shazam will show up and he'll remind you of why the game that you're excited for, you shouldn't be excited because it's definitely going to let you down. And Shazam will simply point out all the issues. And there was a lot of posting. There was some Shazam posting before um, Cyberpunk. And uh, frankly, Shazam was proven completely right. People should have listened to Shazam and they didn't. And they got burned, right? So <laughs> that is, we're, we're just layers of irony here. And all through this kind of mutual understanding that this industry is the worst every year it's going to get worse and worse and the developers don't want us to be satisfied or they don't want to make us happy they don't want the consumers here to actually get what they want right so you know i've already talked about the aloy situation but it's getting more i can feel the salt rising about aloy i mean the game's just come out i think but aloy now you look at her close-ups of her render right her in-game model and they've taken the time to give her a lot of, like, female facial hair, peach fuzz, which I get it, right? That's real realistic, because guess what? Women have peach fuzz, right? Mm. Yeah, and this is, yeah, she's in a pre post-apocalyptic dinosaur robot world, so peach fuzz, realism, ugliness, uh, yes, because we don't want men getting a, a, a little chub in their pants playing as Aloy, right? Because men, men are scum. But by the way, still pre-order Horizon, <laughs> you know, still engage in the classic gamer hype cycle. Like that, that's what the devs and the publishers are expecting. They're going, listen, you worms, like <laughs> this isn't for you and we don't want you to enjoy it, but we're still going to need your pre-orders, right? So yeah, you need to be some kind of woke male feminist and so, i.e. a cuckold to purchase this shit made by people that fucking hate you for identitarian reasons, right? So, hmm. Of course, I understand why, you know, we are in the age of Shazam. Shazam is a prophet that simply, he's just stating the truth, right? Which is that video games are made to demoralize you. They'll always let you down. Never get hyped for anything. Don't pre-order anything ever. And you know what? Like, it's really hard to argue with that. It's really hard. I, I, I am sympathetic with Shazam, but I simply will not allow that Promethean fire within me, the capability to be excited for a game. I have that, I treasure that, and I can only give that now to a hypothetical game developer that really would uh, deserve it. And there's really not many of those types of creators left in the industry, but there's at least one of them, and his name is Miyazaki, and I have been criticized for getting hyped about Elden Ring. Maybe fair enough, maybe fair enough, but you know what? This is kind of a one-off for me, and it's based on very specific criteria involving me enjoying every single Miyazaki-directed game ever made, including Armored Core 4 Answer. Frankly, it's unprecedented. And suddenly, I have Shazam standing over my shoulder going, yeah, uh, you better not get excited because it's open world, meaning it's going to be bad, it has to be terrible, and it sucks because Dark Souls sucks. In fact, all games suck, right? It is impossible for a new game in development to be good. It's simply an impossibility. I'm like, geez, Shazam, whoa. I hate on the industry a lot, but you can go down the pit of hatred to the point where you're just this jaded husk, you know, and you, you compulsively play games, but you don't enjoy them. No, think of it as a symbolic act here. I am trusting Miyazaki and I'm trusting FromSoft to give me something that I'm not gonna fucking, you know, I'm not gonna go fucking cut my dick off in pure hysterical disappointment. And that's a little bit of faith right there, you know? It's a little bit of faith, but guess what? Miyazaki's actually earned that. Give the man a little fucking credit. Give these devs some credit, because if every dev was like FromSoft, the industry would be fucking awesome. And I can just hear the never souls are seething in the comment section. I've been wanking off to Miyazaki for minutes now, 
but I'm sorry, like, I, I, again, this is just my unironic enthusiasm for video games coming through. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, by the way, one more point, because somebody thought they nailed me. They said, how can you be enthusiastic for Elden Ring when they have this gender-neutral character select with uh, option A and option B for male and female? Well, I'm going to say that's just the pause of our localization teams creeping in. I don't think Miyazaki, really, as in based Miyazaki, had to have gender-neutral character creation. He had to have it. Unlikely. I'm going to say unlikely. I'm going to say that he, he gets away with it. He gets away with it. I, I am like, I'm going all in. I'm like a 14-year-old Halo fan getting hyped for Reach. This is actually a dangerous thing to do. I'm kind of insane for even doing this. I am staking my non-existent reputation on Elden Ring being good.